welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making the easiest and yummy chocolate chip cookies. And before you will watch this video, please like and subscribe. These chocolate chip cookies will be ready in a snack. And also, the sweetness of this cookie is not too much or not too less. It's medium. Okay, so let us get started. So the ingredients you will be needing is 225 grams of uh, uh, salted butter. If you're using unsalted, you have to put salt in the all-purpose flour that I will be coming to that. And 50 grams of icing sugar, which is powdered sugar. Vanilla extract. 130 grams of light brown sugar, one egg, which is right here, and half a cup of chocolate chips, baking soda, and 300 grams of all-purpose flour. So first, I'm going to be taking my all-purpose flour, which is 300 grams, and putting one teaspoon of baking soda into it. This recipe doesn't use baking powder, it just uses baking soda. And as it's a cookie, you don't actually have to sift it. And then, we'll give this a nice whip. Yes. Now, we'll set it aside. So my butter is actually room temperature. Make sure your butter is in room temperature, okay? So 225 grams of salted butter. So now I said, if you're using unsalted butter, if you're using unsalted butter, just add half a teaspoon of salt into your all-purpose flour along with your baking soda. Just create this butter bowl. You could use an electric beater or a stand mixer, but I just find it easier to use my plain spatula. Next, I'm going to be adding my, I'm going to be adding my uh, 130 30 grams of light brown sugar into my butter and just break that up. And as I said, you could also use your electric mixer if you would like. And make sure that your butter and your sugar is nicely mixed. Once you know it's none, just like do my folding into like how I fold my cake batter. Just the same thing. There. Then I'll add my confectioner sugar, which is powdered sugar, which is 50 grams of my powdered sugar, and mix this all up. So, you can actually see how the brown sugar takes over the butter and the white powdered sugar. Nice and even. Okay. Now I'll add my one teaspoon of baking and um, of vanilla extract. So, 
optional if you want to use vanilla extract. If you want some kind of flavor also in your chocolate chip cookies, use this. And I love vanilla extract. And it also gives a nice flavor into this cookie. It's like you can, you actually kind of feel this is already the dough, but it's not. <laughs> Nicely firm. And now I'm going to be adding one egg. Actually, this is not like a big, so much cookies. Just a bit. Make sure the shells are not there. And I am going to be mixing this up with... Make sure your eggs and that butter mixture should be nicely mixed. Okay, you'll kind of like get so liquidy. Look at that. What I actually do is now switch to the whisker. Because the whisker actually makes the eggs and the butter come together more. As this is a cookie dough, make sure it's um, you don't need a lot, a lot of liquid. It's like you're making a chocolate chip cake. But now, let's add the flour. I mean the flour and the baking soda. And if you're using unsalted butter, I'll do the salt. Give this a nice mix. First, I'm going to be mixing with my spatula. Then you can go with your hand. Sometimes I use a apron, sometimes I don't. And uh, make sure, why, when you're mixing with your hands, just make sure the flour is well combined. So nice and flimsy. And actually the dough will be kind of sticky and if you could use your, your help from your mother or your father, you could do that. So the dough is actually nice flimsy. If the dough is like sticky like mine, I'll add a bit more flour in my hands, just like this, and then just mix it up. And make sure you also put some flour at your fingers, okay? So while I'm mixing, I'll add half of my all-purpose flour. As I said, if 
your dough is so sticky like mine, just add at least one fourth cup of of all purpose flour. At least add half of that. Because you don't want a lot of flour. Continue mixing. flour to the dough. That's why I take a big, big bowl so the cookie dough can form together. Nice. Now I've mixed my dough and I actually divided it into half. So this is not all the dough, there's more. So now I'm going to be making the shapes. As this dough is very soft, you can't make other shapes. You just have to do it by hand. So how you take is just take a little bit of that dough. I got my pan with parchment on it. If you don't want to put any parchment paper, just just put it over there. So I got it. Just like roll it into a ball. And then just press it like that. And then get it nice and soft. If you want to put more chocolate chips on top, you can, but I don't want to. So, just keep on continuing the same size, or you can do other size, other shapes. You can do anything you want. These I have already done, and I made the circle shapes. And he's my mother's son. So I have heated my oven till 175 Celsius, and I just need to put this in. Now I've got my cookie already done, and I'm going to be putting it at my oven, which has been heated till 175 Celsius. And you can also just heat it at the starting. And keep it inside the oven 15 to 20 minutes. And then we'll be back. Wow, and now my cookies have been baked. My cookies only took at least 19 minutes to bake. I hope you like this recipe and you could also put some chocolate chips on top. That's what I did right here. And now let's give it a try. Mmm, it's really good. I hope you like this video. Please like and share and comment and subscribe. And I hope you like this recipe and please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make apple pie. And the reason I chose apple pie because it's the special day. You might not be knowing what is so special today. It's because today is my father's birthday. So I decided to make apple pie not a cake, not anything other. So let us make apple pie. There's actually two kinds of apple desserts, which is apple pie and apple crumble pie. So let's start with the basics, which is apple pie. Now, um, first ingredients, I'm gonna be starting with the filling because the dough, it just needs four ingredients. So that's very simple. So first let's start with the hard one. So I have six apples which has been cut into cubes and I will be showing you how to cut them into cubes and now I have um, uh, 28 grams of melted butter and remember your butter has not to be hot it has to be cold room temperature is fine sorry about the noise um, so I had one in a half teaspoons of cinnamon powder. Now, if you're using six apples like me, then just use one teaspoon of cinnamon powder. If you're using like seven or eight, then one and a half. Now I have 
um, one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay, look, uh, one and a half tablespoons, not teaspoons, of lemon juice. Then I got one and a, 110 grams of brown sugar. Then one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Now the reason I use a lot because I'm going to make two pies. You can see the base here. One is normal pie and one is bigger. So I actually use a cheesecake, a small cheesecake size one. So because I don't have any cake base. But this is also easy because you can take it out easy. So first I have my apples. Now first I'll be showing you how to cut my apples. So I got at least two apples size. Now I'm showing you how to cut into cubes if you don't know, do not know. First you cut them like this. Okay? And then you just cut it like that. Same thing we do on this one. And same thing we do on this one. Really easy to cut cubes, but if it, it is okay, I'm done mixing my apple filling. You can see it's all well mixed. It has to look like this when it's well mixed. Then, um, actually, I have to um, make it rest for at least 15 minutes, not fifth, not five zero, one five minutes. Uh, so for that, and after that, you have to strain it and cook the juice. I'll be showing. Uh, what to do next. So now I'm we'll just set this aside. Take my other bowls and my other ingredients. Now actually I actually have to make the dough. Now the butter. I'm talking about the butter. Now the other butter for the dough which you need 200 and, uh, 285 grams, okay? 285 grams of room temperature butter. And also, this butter is cold. It's just from the fridge. It's immediately just from my fridge. I cut it into cubes so you can make, you know, use it easier. And this butter is cold. Really cold. I just took it from the fridge. So that's how, you know, dough forms. It's not like other cookie doughs, you have to use room temperature butter. It's not that bad. Then I have 385 grams of all-purpose flour. That's a lot of all-purpose flour. Then half a cup of ice water. Now this ice water is actually very cold water, not normal cold water. Very cold water. Then I have 45 grams of brown sugar. Yeah, uh, you're actually supposed to use light brown sugar, I mean, um, powdered sugar, but then let's use brown sugar. So first, I'll add my all-purpose flour right into it carefully. Now actually, this, it doesn't use baking powder or baking soda. It's just flour. That's the only flour ingredient. And after that, take a big bowl because a lot of them come. Then I add my sugar, which is 40 grams. And I'll take my whisker and just whisk it up. And now I add my full cold butter. into cubes when it was cold so it'll be easier to handle when it's warm. So you, if you have a tasty cutter you could actually just use it to fold in the butter but I'm going to use two forks just for you know cutting the butter. Okay just mixing that up. So actually, uh, with the fork, it'll be a little harder. But then I see it's comfortable. For the first time, for me, it was kind of hard. But then this time, it's amazing. Usually, I just use two knives. 
Okay, what I should do, I take a fork, just cut it like that. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I think I have done mixing well with my fork, okay? So I mixed well with my fork. That's enough of using forks. Now I'm going to be using my bare hands. You know, with your hands, it's kind of easier to do. And also you can press the butter, see? It's easy to just press the butter. But then you have to mix the butter with your flour, your needle, with your flour. This time you can use your mother or your father for help or your big sister or your brother to do this. But for now I'm using my mother to, you know, press all the butter because my father um, hmm. So this is the dessert. Now my dough is done actually. And I kind of already mixed the water. Um, I kind of... As you know, I already mixed the water, I said before. But, um, actually half a cup is not enough. You don't have to put all at once. First you put a little by little. If it's not enough, you can take more water. When it turns into dough like this, it's fine. Now, I actually have to keep this at the refrigerator for 10 minutes and we will work with the apple we made before. Just keep this aside. Now here is the apple. Apples I made before, I already strained a little. So the juice comes out. So I got a strainer and a bowl I used before. And here, I'm going to be adding the apples. <clears throat> the apples goes in right there. And the juice will come out. And, you know, it kind of looks so tasty. But you're not going to eat it raw, right? Just quickly put that in. You can see a lot of juice has came out though for the past 15 minutes. Okay. Take a little juice. Now, I'm gonna strain the juice right away. Look at how much juice came out. That's amazing. That's a good sign. That's actually a good sign. So now actually I already uh, drained all the juice. Look at how much juice came out. So um, uh, now we have to uh, cook the juice. As you can see, the juice is well come together. You can see that brown juice. Now here, we are going to be cooking it. Now actually, I have the juice already kept in the stove for medium flame, low flame, to actually, medium flame, to cook it. You can see. Look at that. It has thickened up. And also, it kind of looks like um, melted palm sugar. So that's enough. I'll off my flame. Now I actually took the filling. And that's kind of like caramel. It's not the apple juice. It looks like caramel. Just give it a nice whisk mix with my spatula. Now I put it into the apples. You can see here the apple and the caramel just drained down. That looks really thick. Keep this aside. And I'm going to mix this. Look at that caramel. Now with two spoons is actually very nice because uh, with one spoon it's kind of difficult to mix because there's a lot of apples in it. So 
that is the wonderful filling. Okay, now I'm going to be making it. My uh, filling has been well mixed. Now I got some flour at my base. Just a little more. Now, you can do this at a wooden table like me or at your cutting board or at the marble table. Now I got my dough. Gosh. I have to divide this because I'm making two. First, I'll take my knife, just divide a little, like that. Put this over here. Place it over there. Just a little more flour. There. Place it there, and now I'm going to be placing it all around. Now, just roll this just like that. Now, go halfway through because you keep on hard turning it, and that's why I use a lot of all purpose flour. And do not use cake and pastry flour because cake and pastry flour actually makes this dough harder and harder. So, it's gonna do just what? Like that. Actually, you have to roll it into a circle. Now, not too much thin. Now, not too much too thin. Now, don't actually have to make it into a circle. Not that good at circle. Now, quickly, you have to put a little more flour at my rolling pin because this is going to be a little hard part. Okay? And you have to keep your base near. Okay? Now, now I have to roll this over here. And start from here. Oh my gosh. That looks really good. Let's see. Spread it from the side. Now as you can see, I already pressed it down. Now you can use a glass like me. To actually press it to the side. It's better. And put my hands is better because you know the marks of your glass always comes. It's better to use your hands. Now after that, I'm done placing this. So this is actually gonna be here. I'm not going on top. So now I'm gonna be cutting it with my knife. So you just press it to the side because you know when it bakes it kind of goes down. So just press this dough at the side. Just like that. Like there you go. Now just use my uh, my knife. Like that is the perfect thing. I mean perfect dough. Cut it like that. And then you can actually press it top. This looks amazing. Okay, and I'll just press it. If it's thick, press a little more like that, and then just cut it right over there. looks amazing. Now it is time to put my filling on top. So take a little of this filling and place it over here. Like that. This looks amazing. Okay. So don't too much. First you're gonna, gonna have to press it, spread it to the side. We got enough flailing with us. <laughs> the reason I put a little more thick, because you know, it, it kind of, the juice kind of soaks the dough. So a little thick is the perfect consistency. And this looks amazing. So just 
spread it to the side. Right there. Over there too. There, there. This is amazing. Okay. Not too much for me. And also make sure you have enough. I have enough of the big the other one too. Okay. Now that's enough for filling. I filled right over here. Then I got just keep this aside. Shimmer. Then I have this over here. I'm gonna press put a little flower. It goes right over there. That's enough. Then um got a little of my dough here. Some of the dough. That is for the smaller one. Now I'll just roll this like big, really big, and that's thin, okay, that's, now here is actually the difficult part you have to do, just put this jar, now here I'm going to be cutting there. like little strips, to cover the cake. You won't put the whole thing on top. The whole dough on top. So, just we start from small, like that. And then, cut that because that's not straight. And then you have to put the same thickness. <coughs> to actually decorate the... Decorate the pie, you put these little strips. And also to cover the filling on top. So it looks kind of good. Even if you're distributing to anyone or you're giving it to your family. Or to family birthday, like my father's birthday. Oh, looks amazing. Now let's make the other, to make a little bigger, also stronger. Roll, roll, roll. This is how to make the bigger size. You have, this is how to make. Now my pie is ready. I already did actually double strips, as you can see. And my oven has been heated. So let us. Open it and it's really hot. Let's keep it in. It's be very, very difficult. Uh, I asked my mother to actually do it because it's very difficult. So, this is how you put it in. Just a minute. Just put it there. <laughs> And that is how you put the pie in the oven. And at least it'll take 40 to 45 minutes to bake. And cool it, let it be cooled down for at least 15 minutes. We'll see you. Okay, look at that wonderful pie. Now my pie has been out of the fridge. I mean, I cooled it for actually 30 minutes because it took time. You can see it's nicely, nicely cooked, baked. I'm going to take a closer look. And it was there at the oven for 45 minutes and rested for at least 30 minutes. And I hope you liked this video. And I hope your apple pie also comes to success. For me and I also hope you enjoyed a baking time so thank you for watching see you in the next video bye hello everyone welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be showing you my recipe about caramel apples and especially caramel apples is usually made in like the olden times of 1997 so here I'm making caramel apples you can actually double it or you can triple it. So now I have three apples here. So 
Actually, I already washed the apples. I dipped them in really, really hot water. I just boiled it, my water, and then I just dipped it over here. And I took a clean, a uh, clean towel and just wiped the water up. So now, um, I got my three apples in a tray. Now here you can see there will be a middle part. Now I have a chopstick. You can use a lollipop stick, a chopstick, or any kind of sticks that you can put. So what I want to do is from the under surface, I'm going to put my camera, my chopstick, if you can see. So you'll be able to dip it. Just put a little more deeper. There we go. And I just take one straw to give it some nice color and also some, you know, some fanciness. So I got here, just dip it, just place it over there. The really thing I like, I love about this uh, caramel apple is it takes very, very less time to make. Just very, very less time. And you can make it in a snap. Like every time you make a meat dessert. It, like it takes so much time to bake. That you don't even know how long you're baking. <laughs> so I got this all on my apple. So now I'm going to be setting this aside. And this is actually all about cooking just all about cooking so you can pop this in a fridge to cool it down but then i see when you put it at the fridge and you'll like be really cold and then you have to wait so now i go just turn on my gas now what i have here are my ingredients i have made ready just keep the scammers apples aside there. So the ingredients I did is half a cup of brown sugar, cup, and then um, I got um, one eighth cup of corn syrup. The reason we use just you can just little is to just create that shine. For me, I'm using little because I just need three apples. If you're using ten apples, then you'll need one cup. So then I'll be needing. Two tablespoons of butter. It can be um, frozen also. Then half a cup of cream. Half a cup of cream. This cream is not whipped. Okay, this is just the plain cream. Then vanilla extract and salt. So now I've got my uh, bowl that has been heated. So now I'm going to be adding my half a cup of sugar. Gosh, that is hot. Now, actually, sorry about all that. So I got half a cup of sugar. To that, I'm going to be adding my half a cup of cream. So the reason we use very less sugar is because you also have cream. And also cream is very sweet. So, just half a cup of sugar is fine. So, just scrape that glass. There we go. After that, I'll just add it over there. And I'll just give this a nice whisk. So, and I use brown sugar also to give that sugar a brown color so now so you can see it's a little thick. Now after that I'm gonna be adding my corn syrup. So as I said I use an eighth one eighth cup of corn syrup. Scrape give this a whisk. You can see the dark color is already forming. 
Then, now we add. Okay, so just we have to actually wait. So these three ingredients, these three ingredients you have to put at the last. When this thing, when this caramel literally thickens, after you wait for at least 10 to 5 minutes, that caramel starts to form. That thickness comes and then after you take it out, just give it a nice whisk. So, we'll just patience. You have to have patience for the caramel to, you know, to form. Okay? You're not going to have patience. So now you can see um, my caramel, the bubbles are forming. And that signal means like, that signal means it's thickening and you can see mine is thickening. You see at the first it was like so thin and look, when I reduce the flame, reduce, it's thick, it's a little more thick. So that, that is when you keep it at least in medium flame, not low flame. Low flame just keeps it like that, it just keeps it room temperature. If it's a low flame, it'll just be very thin. But you want your caramel to be thick. So after you like feel it's come more is coming, then you know it is thickened. So I'll just reduce my flame. You smell that caramel. That's it. So now I can see this is thick enough. So there uh, we have it. Now then it's hot. You really want to work with it. So my mitten. And now you take it out. You can see that camera. Place it on the tray. Now immediately I want to add this butter because while you add it when it's hot it's in room temperature so just add it just like that and I'll just whisk as it melts just take the mitten and whisk you can see that thickness has formed There you go. After that's done, it's time to add my salt. Now, you just don't want a lot of salt. So now I'll just add a pinch of salt. Not that pinch. A very vigorous pinch. Then I want to add oh, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. It's fine because you don't want a lot of vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla goes in. Also, you just don't want a sugar taste on your, your caramel. So I put vanilla extract to, you know, build some flavor. So make sure it's well mixed. And there we go. So... What I feel, you can see, is that thickness has already formed. So, now actually you want to dip your apples right now. So your apples can actually uh, have that good taste. So first, before that, I will talk about the topping I want to do. Now, most of the people use sprinkles. And I'm also using sprinkles. As you can see, sprinkles it is. Then... You can also use almonds, but I like to use this peanut mixture. What I actually did is just um, grinded my peanuts. I just uh, took the peels out of them and just grinded it. And then you can see that fine powder forms. So now that. That apples I have kept. Well, 
come and go right over there. Give that a vigorous. Hmm. Let's see. How much caramel do I want? Yes, that's enough. Just tap it. And now, um, well, I did say I love sprinkles. So now, let's stick it on some sprinkles. There we go. Place it over there. And you want that to cool. You want that to cool. So now I, I'll go for the peanuts. Now, I'll just make two one sprinkles and two peanuts. And then take this. Okay, caramel is very last. This one may have a little caramel. It depends on the size of your of your apples. If it's small, if it's big, you don't know if your caramels are small. I mean, if you are. Apples are small. Okay. The caramels are done. I dip them and I put the outings. Now, the reason I made three is because I have two brothers and including me. I am a sister. And then here are my brothers over here. Hi. Hello. And then we are going to be trying the caramel apples. There you go. The big one for me. The medium size, and I'll have the meaniest. You just like it? Mmm. Mm. It's really good. Mmm, juicy. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make apple juice. Well, here in India, it's like 27 degrees. Well, it's very hot. So I decided to make something nice and cold to enjoy in the sun. So here today, I'm making a healthy and nice juice. So let's get started. I'm going to be telling you the ingredients we'll be needing. We'll be needing honey. Well, um, honey, this I'm using Komu honey. Well, you can use normal honey, natural honey, I can say. And one apple. Well, I'm just making one glass. If you're making five glasses, then use four apples. It depends on the quantity you're making. Then I'll be using cold water. Well, I'm not using ice water. Then when I put in my glass, I'll be using ice. So first, I got my apple um, washed. Well, you do not want to peel the apple skin. Otherwise, you won't get that color. So I'm, I'll be cutting and showing you how to cut it. So first, you got to cut it into half like this. Okay, can you see? It's like, <coughs> sorry, at the middle there are seeds. So we got to remove this. But first, let's get rid of the stem. I'm going to cut it into half. And be careful with the knife. Okay. At the middle, can you see? Just remove that. Okay. But there's still more at the at inside. So we got to remove it. And don't worry if all these come in your table. Or your pan like me. So I'll be cutting over here. Okay. First I'll be cutting like this. Okay. 
Then I'll be cutting it into cubes. So here, after I cut into cubes, I'm just putting it. Well, you can use a big blender. So I'll be putting these cubes in. Just cut them like that. Well, you know how to cut into cubes. I'll show you how to cut in my apple pie video. <coughs> still didn't see the apple pie video then please check it out um it's a really nice and it's nice for desserts and snacks you can have it with tea that'll be nice okay so i remove the middle part and when you remove the middle part it looks like this okay so let's cut it and cut. well now i'm done chop I chopped my one apple, you see, in one apple, a lot of pieces cut. So I'll be putting this into my big blender now. I'll put this aside. <coughs> well, now I'll be adding my water on here. Well, I'll be adding about um, one cup. So uh, at least fine, and then we're gonna um, sieve it. I mean, sift it. Okay, let's put it in the blender. I put it in the blender. Now I'm gonna um, blend it together while <coughs> while I keep ready for a bowl and a strainer. Well, uh, people, you maybe you have a big kind of strainer. Well, I have a juice strainer. It's used for juice. That's why it's very big. And okay, uh, I'm gonna be grinding this right now in about two speeds so it can grind faster. And keep it locked. blend it a little more okay cool. but I'm gonna blend it again because still piece big pieces are there so about here two speed again <laughs> So I got a bowl. Just put it. I'm gonna strain it. I strain my spoon. There. That's how it strains. So um, let's just 
Okay, can you see that color of the apple juice comes? Maybe you guys have um, bought apple juice and see how it is sweet. Well, they put white sugar. Okay, so it's still not sweet. I'm just gonna drain it. Can you see it's like paste over here? Well, you can use this as like apple sauce, you know? <clears throat> You can put it in your bread or something. Okay. Well, this is done. Put it right here. The last thing we'll be putting is honey. What if it's not sweet? You'll be like, it's so bitter. So we gotta put honey. Well, the shop people put sugar, but here we're gonna make it really healthy. So let's put some honey. Well, I, I just have a little honey left, so that full bottle. If you have like a full bottle, then just put a tablespoon of honey. I mean, one and a half tablespoons of honey. My honey, this is a very sweet honey. So, um, it'll make nice and sweet contrast with the apple. Well, the apple is also a little sweet, right? So, um, honey will make it even more sweet. You can add more honey if you want it, if you want to. Okay, I'll mix this up. Look at this. The color really came. <coughs> well, this is what the apple juice I would love to try. Well, I got my jar here. Wash, of course. And I'm going to pour this. Uh oh. <laughs> Spilled a little. Yeah, that's okay for now. So I added the full thing in my jar. And look how much came out. Well, if you think this is not sweet enough, then you can put sugar instead of honey. Well, I think I'm gonna put more sugar. Okay, and so I'm gonna close this in my cap. Okay, let's try it. That tastes really nice. You can really taste the honey and the water and the apple. Together, it tastes really nice. And thank you guys for watching. I hope your apple juice comes out really nice. And please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Bye. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making chocolate twist roll. And before you watch this video, please like and subscribe. Chocolate twist roll is one of my favorite, favorite, um, favorite dessert. And also, this cake is made from Anna Olsen. I actually made this cake yesterday. I made it for my auntie. It was her birthday. And I made this. So, I'm going to be telling the ingredients you will be needing. You'll be needing five room temperature eggs, one fourth cup of, of cold water, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of granulated sugar, salt, and uh, 35 grams of all-purpose flour, which is one-fourth cup, and half a cup of cocoa powder. Mine is natural. You can use Dutch process or Hershey's. So, let me tell you about the sugar. Half a cup of sugar, I actually want to boil it. And the one fourth cup I'm going to be mixing with my eggs. So first thing, I'm going to be cracking my eggs. And remember, your eggs actually has to be in room temperature. Every time, you always have to use an egg which is in room temperature. It's very important. Now, let's like crack the eggs. And always, and this is not just for this recipe, room temperature eggs. Every, every cake.
cake, you have to use room temperature eggs. So this is five eggs. Okay. Nice. Nice and soft, a room temperature. Keep this aside. And now I actually want to mix this on low speed. Wipe my hands because you don't want any eggs So now I'm going to be adding my one fourth cup of granulated sugar. Then I'll mix this on high speed. So actually, you don't have to make it fluffy, white, fluffy right now. When I add the sugar, the rest sugar, then only you have to make it fluffy. So now I want to boil my sugar. Now I got my steel bowl and to that I'm going to be adding my one fourth cup of hot water. And then, I mean cold water. And then I'm going to be adding my half a cup of granulated sugar. Okay. And you actually have, have to mix it so, you know, you don't actually, you, you have... So you quite feel it satisfying. So you can see it's still there, the sugar. I'll just put it on medium flame so you know it can boil faster. And if you have a candy thermometer, then you have to cook it till 239. Then the sugar will be dissolved nicely. And see the little bubbles when you put it on high flame. It's nice. The reason you have to boil it so it's it's flexible. You can it's flexible so when you roll it, it won't crack. Okay. Look at that. It's nicey, and when you know it, when you know if you don't have a candy thermometer, when you know it's dissolved, it, the sugar will be. Nicely dissolved and it's ready to keep mixing. My sugar has dissolved, you can see. I also use it without the candy thermometer. It's nicely dissolved. I'll, I'll off my flame and then I'll just take it out. Okay, look at that. Now, as I showed before, that my sugar has dissolved my water. Now, if you use my liquid mixer, it's kind of be difficult. So, I'll put on high. What you actually, what you actually want to do is, when while you're mixing, you want to put it down the side of the bowl, so you actually won't cook the eggs. Because who wants eggs when it's cooked? Now, what I want to actually do is to 
see my cocoa powder. So first thing you have to put half a cup of cocoa powder. You can put natural or Dutch process or Hershey's, your choice. Bit. And now I'm going to be adding at least 35 grams of all-purpose flour if you're following the cups, then one-fourth cup. Okay, I'll just sieve my flour nice and smooth. And then, you. the reason we have to sieve, I mean, like, you know, Sift on this is because you can see the rock balls. So you actually have to, you don't want any rock powder balls in your cake. So nice and fluffy. Now I'll just use my hand, it's easier, you know. So, once I'm done, now I can. Look at that. <laughs> Now I can add my one fourth teaspoon of salt. And my salt is actually sea salt. There. Now once I'm done, now I'm going to be mixing it with my spatula. And don't mix it too fast. Use folding technique because you don't want the fluffiness of that eggs and sugar to go. Okay. Okay, I mixed my cocoa powder, all-purpose flour, and salt. Well, it looks nice and chocolatey. Now, don't over mix it otherwise the fluffiness will go. Now I have my 9 by 13 square pan. A square pan is a jelly roll pan, which is a baking pan like a cookie, but it has the, you know, the, the block size. Now I put some parchment paper on it, so you know it doesn't stick to the pan. And actually, I did not grease the pan with any butter or flour. You actually want it to stick. So now I'm going to be pouring this luscious batter into it. You might see it's over, overwhelming, you know, like overfilling. But no, it won't. You actually want it, the Swiss roll, to be kind of thick. And I already told the reason we boil. The sugar and water is because it's flexible. And look at that. When we boil it, it's also nice and fluffy. That nice. Just scrape my bowl. Okay. Nice. So make sure your batter is actually fluffy before, if you're making it the first time, it might not be that perfect because that time, at the first time, it could be so perfect. A nice, just scrape that. There we go. Now I have poured it into my baking pan and there's a 9 by 13. And actually, I cannot put it because, it, you know, it's overfilled. So my mother is actually going to be putting it into my oven, which has been heated to 175 Celsius. If you're using Fahrenheit, then 350 Fahrenheit. Okay. Opening. My mother is going to be doing it because, you know, I cannot do it. <laughs> so... If you're, you actually have to have an adult with your side to put that. And this is the thing I love about Jolly Roll, about this roll. It doesn't take any time, it just takes 15 minutes to bake. And I'll also be ready. Uh, don't make the buttercream now. I'll show you once my cake is ready.
Now I have my cake that I removed from the oven. And what I actually did, I took an offset spatula and run it at the sides to remove that stickiness at the side. Now I have my icing sugar. I icing sugar with this powder. Now I just want to dust it over here. So actually when you take a cloth, it won't stick. There we go. Now I take a tea towel. This my mom actually does because it's kind of difficult for me. So what I want to do is actually to take a tea towel and to put this right over there. And what I want to do is I'll actually flip it. There we go. What I actually did is I cool, cool it so it's easier, you know, to take it out. There we go. After it's done, set this pan aside. Now I'm going to remove the parchment. Carefully. I can remove the parchment. Get nice. Side of the pan. Now, we also want to put a little dusting over here. So, you know, you don't actually want it to stick. Actually, don't worry, you won't get any taste. Now, this part is very difficult. So, I actually have to roll it like this. My mom is going to be doing it. Let's just see the step how we do it. Okay, just take the cloth, make sure you leave space over here so you can be able to roll it. What my mom actually does is to fold it like that and roll it. Just, you can actually close your eyes, but I don't want to. My mom is going to be doing that. And then I have rolled it nicely. I mean my mom, and I'm going to be keeping this aside, okay, there. Now let's make the topping. Now I'm going to be making the filling. I have half a cup of ribbon cream, and to that I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of cream cheese, okay. I don't have cream cheese, so I'm using cream spread, I mean cheese spread, okay. So before I put it, I want to actually whip my whip it till it's nice and fluffy. And what I want to do is actually I want to add a bit more. So you know why? Because for the topping, I can have enough cream. And this is whipping cream.
my cream is nice and fluffy. How I know you can see that stiff peak it just comes out like my crumbs. Now I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of cream cheese. Mine is cream spread. So, let's take a bite. Teaspoon so I can scrape it. The reason I put this is for some flavor and also. And if you don't have whipping cream, you can make butter cream with just cream cheese, uh, unsalted butter, and icing sugar. Okay, I'm going to be whipping this nice. There we go. Now, I'm done. Now, I just had to take a spatula. Okay, look at that. You, I know, how I know it's nicely done is because you can see that stuff you eat, right? Okay, now I'm going to be taking my piping bag, but I got a flower piping tip there. And what I want to just give one skin of my cream. Don't have, no, don't need too much. Just as much as enough. Because you don't want a lot of cream on top. Okay. Now we'll just, you know, put it over here. I might put a little more to, you know, have enough. Because you don't want to worry if you have enough for the decoration. If you're making um, a big one, then you'll need a big. Now I'm done. I just want to scrape this bowl. There we go. I have whipped it. I actually put some in my piping bag with that piping tip. Now I actually want to give it a nice blueberry flavor. So what I'm going to be adding is a bit of blueberry crush. See? Measure a tablespoon. I'll add a little more. You know, you, you just don't want a nice, just a plain cream flavor. You also want some blueberries. Now I add enough of blue, blueberry jam. You can also make blueberry jam by just uh, make, making it with blueberries. Nice. You, it actually give it a pop of color, you know, into the cake cream. That's what I like about these crush. It also gives the pop of color, and it also gives the the taste. Okay, now I have finished mixing my cream, the filling. Now I want to unwrap, unwrap my cake. It'll actually be like, you know, kind of sticky. Let's go. Now what I want to do is to add a first that filling at the middle. Look at that. Now I'll take an offset spatula and just spread it into the sides like so. And look at that. It's like that's enough cream, but no. <laughs> you also want to keep put it at the sides over there, as you can see. Nice and smooth. You might feel a bit nervous in this part, but it's okay. There. Now we'll add a more of my cream. You might think it's enough of cream. I mean, so much cream you have whipped, but I mean, you might think it's very less, but this is actually just the right amount. There we go. I put my cream. You can see some for decorating a okay? cake. Now, my mom is going to be rolling it, you know.
just like that. So, actually you just forget the cloth, you can just mix it, um, roll it with your hands. Nice and firm. buttercream frosting then just please chill the Swiss roll for two hours so you know you have enough time now let's decorate my Swiss roll okay so I say this this is a big one okay now I already transferred it to my plate I just want to trim off the edges you know so it doesn't be that grumpy the side of the cake. Oh my. Just keep this aside. And at the the reason we trim it, even if you're giving it to someone, it also might come into black. And then like it might come messy like this one. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna be decorating it with the cream I saved. And imagine for your birthday, you can make an even bigger one. Just give a nice curve on each side. Look at that. Okay. I'm done. And now what I want to do is actually, you can add some sprinkles if you want, but for me, I like to add some cherries. So, what I want to do is take my cherry, just place them right over there. Don't want to just like, you know, stuff the whole throat with all these. Okay. Every place, I mean every side has you, if you want, you can put every place filled with these cherries. And the thing I love about these is it's in, it doesn't even take any time, it, but if you're making butter cream, it might take a time. And now, let's see how it looks from the... Look at that. It's like jelly. It's like a jelly. Now, let's see how it also tastes like. So, just trim it over here. Because you don't want a lot. You know... If you want it, if your first time, then you might want a lot. There we go. Look at that. The thing I like about the Swiss roll, at the inside you can see a lot of cream. A lot of cream is inside. In it looks that at the middle it's filled with cream and at the sides and also outside there's cream. Now let's give it a try. Mmm, it's really good. And I also thank Anna Olsen 
for sharing a recipe. And I hope you like this recipe too. Thank you. Bye. And please subscribe and like. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be making North Style Garlic Pickle. So this is also one of my favorite pickles and we're going to be starting to make it. So let's get started. Now as you can see my table, I'm going to be telling the ingredients. Uh, the ingredients will be in the description below if you want to make it. So uh, here, my spices. So I have my spices here. Here I have uh, fenny, fenny Greek seeds, which is half a teaspoon. Here I have yellow mustard seeds and which is two tablespoons. You could use uh, black mustard seeds, but I would prefer yellow mustard seeds. Okay, so now here I have carom uh, seeds, which is one tablespoon. And over here I have um, half a teaspoon of nigella, uh, but I use about one, uh, one and a half teaspoons. And over here, I have uh, fenny Greek seeds, uh, sorry, uh, fennel seeds. I get confused. So this is fennel seeds, which is one tablespoon. So these are my spices. So um, here I'm gonna, my seeds are totally dried, but if your seeds are like moisted, if your seeds are moist, you could uh, roast them and make it dry, but my seeds are already dried. So uh, these are my spices and we're gonna grind them later. So I'll be telling the spice, the powder spices. So the next spice is powder spices here. So now what I have here is red chili powder. I have uh, one and a half tablespoons of red chili powder. If you don't want your garlic pickle to uh, be too spicy, then you could use about one tablespoon of red chili powder. Next I have over here is one tablespoon of turmeric powder. And over here I have uh, one tablespoon of white salt. And over here I have one tablespoon of black salt. And this is Kashmiri chili, which is one teaspoon. Like to make a little more, little more spicy, I put Kashmiri chili. And over here I have hing, which is one teaspoon. Next we'll be going to our garlic. Of course, garlic. So I have half a kilogram of garlic. And these garlic are perfectly fresh. And if you still have the peels on it, just remove it. Okay, so we're gonna start making our pickle right now. The next step is, uh, before you do the next step, make sure your mustard oil uh, is heated and you'll be needing one fourth cup of mustard oil. But then uh, one thing I'll be telling, mustard oil, uh, we use mustard oil to, it's a very common uh, oil that we use in North India. But then if you use, um, uh, coconut oil or any other oil that but then I would prefer mustard oil because it is very uh, good with this pickle so I have my mustard oil here as you can see this is my mustard oil I'm gonna be adding the full thing I doubled my but the recipe so here um, we'll put this whole thing in my pan and make sure your pan is on medium heat not high heat or low heat. Uh, you you could use any other oil, but I I would prefer this mustard oil. So let it heat. So uh, the smell of the mustard oil. You know, mustard oil has that kind of uh, weird smell, punctured smell. So uh, we're gonna need that smell to come out. So in our pickle, we don't need the smell. So we are gonna heat it to take the smell out. Okay, so I got my grinding here ready. But before I wanna grind my spices, I'm gonna tell you about my Nigella seeds. We are not gonna be grinding this because if we grind it, it makes our pickle color black. 
So we're gonna leave this out. I have my grinder here. Right here, I'm gonna put all my spices, including this. All the spices except nigella seeds. Remember, if you put nigella seeds, at the color of the pickle will become black. Okay, so one thing I want to tell you is we should not grind the spices where when it's powder. We should make it coarse because if it's powder, you could like, the taste will be very mild. So uh, we're going to make it coarse. Let's grind it. So remember, your powder has to be coarse. Let's check it out now. About one second, we have to keep it in the grinder. Okay, so let's open. So if it's coarse, then it's okay. Then it's powder, of course. Ah, uh, come on. That looks okay. It's a little coarse. So that's okay. This feels coarse. So it's not like a powder or anything, but it's coarse. You can see. Now uh, my oil is done. It's very hot. I can smell it. It's very strong. And my spices, it's very coarse, you can see, and my power spice, uh, powder spices. And remember, Nai Nigella is, um, is still over here with me. It's still not grinded. Otherwise, you know, this powder will become black. Of course, you don't want that to happen. But then one thing we have to wait for to make our pickle is for our mustard oil to cool down. You can, I can smell it from here if you are making, you can also smell it. But then we have to wait, uh, wait, it, uh, wait for it to cool down. The smell will go on, then we can, we can be ready to mix it up. So I assemble everything right in front of me. So I have lemon juice here, which is one lemon plus half a lemon. Uh, so this is the lemon juice out of that. But you can use vinegar or uh, armchur. But then I would prefer uh, lemon juice because it's nice and natural. No chemicals added. So lemon, lemon I would be using. So let's start to assemble it. So first I'm going to be adding a little of my uh, lemon. Then my garlic. The full thing. Slowly. Okay. Remember, uh, this is half a kilogram of garlic. So I'll just mix this up with the lemon I put, so with a spatula. So I uh, mixed it completely. Next, I'm gonna add my powder spice. And I'll mix it up. So I mixed it very nice and I can smell that salt and all the chili powder, which is very good. So the only last, well, wait, two last ingredients I have here is my mustard oil. So I'm gonna be put a little of it Okay, uh, put it a little, then we're going to mix it up a little. Okay. 
and we're gonna mix it well and make sure it's well mixed and one thing I want to tell you is this garlic picker is very very nice for your health it has all that spices and it has garlic especially and also one thing we can't just eat it immediately we need to leave it overnight so the spices get soaked in our oil and the oil gets a good flavor in it so i'm done mixing it you can see how a little uh, water but then when you uh, get uh, put it rest overnight it's going to be really good so next last thing you have to put don't forget i night nigel we of course have to put it right now spread it I'm going to spread it and I'm going to mix this now. Okay, so um, I'm done mixing it and thank you guys for watching and remember, rest it overnight. Um, but I'll be ending the video here. So I hope you guys like this recipe and please subscribe to my channel and like this video and comment. If you want to ask any questions, you can ask it in the uh, comment section below. And remember, I'm going to be telling the ingredients in the description below. Thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.